Hi, I'm Richard Owen, CEO of Agilisys. We're a transport safety company providing solutions in the UK and abroad. We've always had a heritage in providing online solutions, looking at collision data, providing mapping, and then also dashboards as well. When we became Esri Partners around two years ago, we wanted to use their systems because they were really simple for us to upload existing data sets and then also control who had access to them. Our clients are in the public and private sector and sometimes want information to be you know, accessible to members of the public and sometimes just members of their own team. That's why using RTOS Online is really useful for us because we can very quickly control who has access to which tools. Today, I'm gonna to show you through four different solutions that we've developed over the last couple of years. I could have shown many, many more. We're gonna start off by having a look at CrashMap Pro. This was the reason that we came to Esri in the first place. We've been running crashmap.co.uk for about 10 years now, and it's been really useful for members of the public and transport planners to get access to information that would normally be really hard to get hold of. We have a single repository of all collision data over the UK for the last 10 years. Let me show you now how CrashMap Pro works. Of course, it's accessed online. This is a really easy way for people to get access to the information. Whenever they come into the tool, they can see the updates that we've put on the system quite recently. Either that's new features or new data sets. We always want to make sure that the information is as up to date as possible. And this is something that our clients really appreciate. As you can see, we use a lot of standard features and filters. People can filter by severity, for example, just to see those collisions that were most serious. They can also filter by year. We have 10 years worth of information in there. You can also view individual collisions and the details associated with them, be they casualties or vehicles. We have a whole host of features available. Much of the work we do is done offline in ArcGIS and we then upload the data into ArcGIS Online. For example, here, we've already carried out queries that show you what types of road users have been involved. For example, motorcyclists. Clicking the filters on and off is really simple. One of the key features that we were interested in was the ability to draw lines on a map and be able to buffer. This is a standard tool that transport planners and investigators use when looking at collision histories along an individual route. This is a tool that's available in ArcGIS Online and people can then choose to print out reports looking at that information. There are various different templates available to people and they can simply choose to show maps or to print out details about all of the collisions. Users have the ability to control what information they show on the reports. We found that users were quite quickly asking if they could upload their own data into the system. And that's something we've done for Merseyside Police with their version of CrashMap Pro. As you can see, we have a lot of the same filters that you'd expect to see in the normal CrashMap Pro, but because they've given us more up-to-date data, you can get access to it much more quickly. There's also more data included, some of which isn't normally ava made available to members of the public. This will include the reasons why the crashes take place, as we call them, contributory factors. For example, let's have a look at all the crashes that occurred where a vehicle defect was involved. Alternatively, have a look for the ones where a pedestrian was involved. As you can see, the map updates really quickly. You can take this further with an operations dashboard as we've done here. The charts can be used as filters and they automatically update the map. They also update all of the other charts as well. This allows people to look at multi-factor analysis really quickly and easily and much faster 
than in traditional desktop applications. We're constantly working with clients to understand their needs and look at how we can develop more solutions around these areas. Moving on from CrashMap Pro, the next product that we worked on was the Road Safety Foundation's annual risk map of roads in the UK. This is something that's published every year and gets a lot of attention. We carry out the analysis for them offline, matching the collisions to individual road sections. We then make this available in a series of web maps that we produce via a story map. This enables everything to be embedded in a single location. It also means that we can increase the level of complexity available in the analytical to tools we provide. First of all, people can just have a look at risk ratings. As you can see, roads are coloured according to their risk. The black roads are the ones that are the highest risk, for example. We use labels to help people easily tag roads. As you can see, it works really quickly. People can zoom into their local area and then start to explore more information about their roads. In this example, when you zoom in far enough, you can see the locations of the individual collisions. You can then find out more information about the route. Beyond that, you can also filter on individual road sections according to their classification. There are four main categories of road in the web map. Here, we can look at persistently high risk rural roads. You can see there aren't too many on the map, but they're really easy to identify with the filter. Alternatively, you can have a look at which roads have the best opportunity for investment. If you want more detail, have a look at the individual route dashboards. These use operation dashboards. We've still got the map there with the same information, but you can also see related information. Here, if we click on the individual road, you can see as many details as you'd want. There's information there about average daily flow, as well as the risk rates, and also the collision history over the last six years. Because of the way that the story maps work, it's really easy for us to embed a user guide in there. As well as public sector clients, we find that the private sector are also interested in route risk. This is really important, say if you're a transport company and you're running a fleet of vehicles, or in this example, if you're National Express running the UK's biggest coach network. They wanted to understand more about risk along their individual routes to make sure they were doing all they could to protect vulnerable road users. They're particularly interested in cyclists, pedestrians and motorcycles who may come off worse if they are hit by a coach. We produced a series of web maps for them, but the biggest challenge for us was to create a single portal that would enable people to explore risk for all of the networks at the same time. As you can see, we created this single national dashboard First of all, this is the way that all of the individual route data is accessed. You can see here that we've got the same color coding system in place. So green routes are the ones that are safest. You can use these simple filters to just change which roads you want to have a look at. If you want to look at individual collision density, you can do that. Or maybe just the collisions that involve pedestrians. We can also use individual route filters here. I like the way that when you click on the individual route, it then zooms in. It's really quick and easy to look at different routes around the country, compare their collision densities, and then look at them in more detail. Here, when you click on view dashboard, it opens up a new tab and you can see in much more detail what's going along on that road. The road risk varies significantly, and it's quite easy to select the roads that have the highest risk. Look at the black roads or the red roads, and then through to the orange ones as well. These are the ones where there are the highest collision rates. It's really quick and easy to zoom in. We've got lots more data in this map. We've got information about journey usage as well. 
We've got that from their telematics data. It's really important to see not only are the routes high risk, but whether they are regularly traveled along by the coaches. Once again, you can select an individual road section if you want to. If this is a road section that you're concerned about, perhaps it's near a bus stop or a depot, you can have a look there and see how the individual collision densities change. What kinds of road users are at highest risk here? Pedestrians, cyclists? Because we have extra information from telematics and dash cams, we can now see incidents that may have happened along those individual roads. This is an extra layer of information that most people don't have access to. Because National Express have invested in lots of safety technology and have got outputs that we can import into their system, it's really easy for us to see events that have happened on the roads. Here, we're having a look at all of the events that have triggered a warning. When you zoom in on the map, you can see that the numbers change along the side. Here we can see whether there are any collisions that have occurred, whether there's been any red light running problems, or whether there's been late braking. You can also use these as filters. Here are just the ones that involve late braking, for example. This solution has been rolled out to nearly 50 different users in National Express, who are now using it to evaluate their routes. Finally, I wanted to show you one of our most recent solutions that we've created. Everything that you've seen so far has had a look at collision data, but here we're adding in two new data sets. The information about speed limits on roads, as well as the speeds of vehicles traveling along them, is really useful to local authorities and police forces. They need to understand which roads have the biggest speed problem, which is why we created this speed compliance dashboard. This is available to CrashMap Pro users as a simple add-on. It uses the Ordnance Survey Master Map Highways layer. Local authorities already get free access to most of this information through the public sector geospatial agreement. All that's required is an additional license to access the speed and speed limit data. Although a handful of local authorities have been using this, the ability to create an online tool that made accessing it and analysing it really easy is the thing that's really expanding the use of this information within the sector. The example that I'm showing here is for Devon and Cornwall. As you can see, there's lots and lots of roads here, over 200,000 road sections. It's impressive that they all managed to show on the map at the same time. Of course, it does make analysing trends quite difficult. So we've created a series of bookmarks that allow people to zoom into the major towns. As you can see, even though we have really large map files here, it loads really quickly. What we're displaying here, first of all, is the speed limits on the roads. As you can see, there've been lots of 20 mile per hour limits installed in Exeter. Let's just filter for those. You can see that the speed information adjusts down the side. These are aggregated values. We have information about average speeds and in this version, 85th percentile speeds as well. It's really easy using the built-in Esri tools to simply select one region. Here we can see one section of 20 mile per hour limit. The tool makes it really easy for people to see difference in speeds at different times of day. If you want to just look at an individual road section, you can do that too. Here we highlight all times of day whenever the average or 85th percentile speeds are above the posted speed limit. Alternatively, people can change the background mapping so that it just shows by time of day which roads have the biggest problem. Here we can see that same stretch of road highlighted red. There are lots and lots of roads available for analysis, so you can simply choose to filter out the ones where there aren't the biggest speeding problems. This really enables people to do quick, rapid analysis and look where there are the biggest speeding compliance problems in their areas. We're seeing incredible demand for this product at the moment. 
It's being used by people to plan enforcement, and it's also being used to help protect vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians and cyclists. I hope you found this Whistle Stop Tour really interesting. We've really enjoyed being Esri Partner members for the last two years. It's great to be supported by the team there, and it's been really useful for us to try and find new customers. We'd certainly recommend Esri Partner membership to anybody. If you'd like to know more about our products and solutions, you can contact me directly. You can simply find my details on our website at www.agilisys.co.uk. Thank you.